Back in early 2015, I fell in love with the chateau I found online. I then had to convince my other half to give up our London life and move to rural France. To my surprise, she said yes, and a year later said yes again at our wedding at the chateau we now called our home. It's just us two and our husky lightning, and now of course a few animals who seem to have joined us along the way. It's such a beautiful place to live, so we decided to share it with everyone. It's obviously a lot of hard work for just us two. It's not always a fairy tale, and we don't always get it right. But it's all fantastic fun along the way, so we bring this chateau back to life for others to enjoy as much as we do. Follow us, Angelina and Phil, along with the highs and lows of our chateau life. Hi guys, we are back. Angelina's already working away because we are now flat out trying to get ready for the events in the hope that they are allowed to be held. There's a lot to do and obviously we've had our little time away traveling and uh, thank you for your patience while we got the videos back up and running. But here we go. Hope you enjoy the episode. So I'm trying to fit these solar lights. I've got a couple of them on using my cordless drill, which just does not have enough manpower to get into it. So I've had to buy a new drill. And this is gonna be so much quicker. The new drills just managed that in about a tenth of the time my cordless one would. Right, raw plug. And screw. Right, a bit tighter. There we go. All right. Now for the rest of them. Now that the lights have been attached by Phil, I can crack on and tidy up the rest of the terrace. Now over there is our bar, bar area that we use for our event. And obviously it's looking very, um, wintry and weeds and things like that are all around it. So my job is going to be to pick out any big weeds and Phil is then going to be using a um, gas burning weed torture device <laughs> um, afterwards to make sure that all the seeds are dead because I've not been on time keeping up with, you know, picking the weeds and stuff like that. So he's going to be burning the weeds after I've picked the big ones. So that speeds up the clear up process and will transform this area again. The weeds I'm talking about are something like this, nice and big. And the small ones, Phil is just gonna burn out because that's nice and easy. And hopefully we'll get this area back looking nice again. I've made some progress. So now it's Phil's turn to start um, burning the weeds. Okay, Philly, so show us how you um, start the whole thing. Uh, right, I mean, this is technically you buy these anywhere. You can buy smaller ones as well if you've got a small garden, which used like small gas canisters, very portable. Um, they're really cool because they, you don't have to use chemicals, which obviously we can't in many places because of the dog or the birds. Uh, and it's also just not very good. But if it's got quite long, 
you burn the seeds. So rather than just pulling stuff out, you spill seeds and it just carries on. Yeah. You burn the seeds at the same time. And as you burn all the leaves, apart from the fact it can't regenerate, it also burns the sap inside the roots. So it kills the roots. It technically sort of boils the weed alive. Yeah. Which is two one. So any seeds that drop, like dandelion, things you want spot and whatever... The one thing I have to say, and we heard this, or we read this somewhere, is don't use it anywhere near a wooden fence or anything like that. That's we are literally just, you know, concrete uh, all around. So, yeah, this yeah. is only for gravel, stone, sort of safe areas. You do have to be a bit careful. I, my, my friend's aunt's house was burnt down by their neighbour in lockdown while they were using their weed torch against their fence, caught their fence, caught the side of the house and the whole lot went up. So don't use it near anything flammable, please. Um, right. Okay, so what are you doing now? Uh, well, I'm using my small blow torch to light it. Oh, yeah, we can see a bit burning. All right, I'll leave you to it now. Go for it! This is a lot easier than weeding by hand. So the weed perner proves itself to be an essential tool. I'll put a link in the description below. All it is, is this with the hose and then you just buy a bottle. It's so easy. All finished now and it's looking lovely. All the edges are weed free and the bar should be open for an event soon. All we need is a bit of rain and wind to take the black ash away. So what do you think, Philly? What do we do next? Right. I have to appreciate what you've done so far because it looks great. Uh, but it's not ready, obviously. I've got to just clean up the outdoor furniture, probably ideally with a jet wash. Um, some of it will need a quick paint again to seal it for the weather. Um, obviously the bar, I've got to clean up the parasols, probably take the covers off and put them in water. And there's a little table I'd like to make for over there between two sort of puff seats, but that's time dependent. Got quite a bit of the wooden furniture I've got to repair. Um, you know, just wear and tear. A couple of chairs that just need gluing and screwing back together. And um, mainly then get the ivy off the wall from the back and all the stuff growing in the moat wall. But um, that's quite a fun job actually because it just involves pottering around the boat and just pulling it out the wall and if you say so but we are time sensitive so we, let's see what we can do we are i'm saying that's what needs to be done in a perfect light i'm starting with the repairs and stuff so we'll see great not today though no so obviously i've got to do a bit of painting this just Needs a new piece of wood in there. Definitely painting. The stools and the bar could do with a nice sort of coat of paint. Got a few items here. A couple of chairs like this just need a bit, bit of TLC and then paint. I'd really love to make a little table to go with those two little bits of seating. Little uh, paint those to keep them fresh. And then obviously could do with taking that cover off and washing it. Same as that one. But the fun job I enjoy. You can't see this very well from the patio, but it's a really quick job. You just pull it off, you're in the boat, it's a bit of fun. And uh, it's very satisfying to see the wall afterwards. Bigger job, however, is all the ivy over here. That might have to wait. Although it's creeping in over here. So, um, may get on with that one evening here's the lights now on in the evening just what i was looking for so i'm really happy with those and the patio is looking fantastic 
I am trying to tidy up. So I'm using our weed torch, as you can see. Try to tidy up this area a bit, as I've got some gates to go in, and I need to move some stuff around. So uh, we use the weed torch because I can't use chemicals. One, I don't particularly like chemicals, but also the peacock will uh, nibble on the stuff as it's dying and get poisoned. So um, yeah, weed torch. Let's get to it. considerably neater little spot so I can move that over there and then tackle this lot it really is never ending isn't it okay one item which is an upcoming project I need to get sorted soon. Now in a neat and tidy place. Now to deal with the rest. And of course I can easily get stuff in and out of the back garden now, which is the point. Went mental with the weed torch. Bit more to go. Out of breath after that however looking considerably better and when I've got the edging in I'm gonna right up the edges ah. all right good another two stumps gone so we can stick with my mantra a stump a day keeps the liability claims away Right, there is the walkway out into the back garden and all the events. Right there is a clump of conifer tree stumps that fell over in a storm that really needs to go, but they're chunky. I don't want to do this. Now I've fixed this trimmer. I've just changed the blade over from this, which if you clip things with it, it does tend to make a nasty noise and bend things for this and obviously these bend in when they hit something let's see if that's any better hoping so got good reviews Strimming done, we can actually see what we're dealing with. Apologies, I am out of breath. Ah. Right, fortunately, there's a lot doing that big main stump that we're gonna have to start cutting down with a chainsaw, I think. 
multiple little stumps. And it's going to take ages. You know what I say? Bite sized chunks. Slight update. Gone. 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 About to go. Trying to avoid it. So the strimming is done and I am converted. This is definitely going to be the only one I really use. Really is fantastic because these are quite sharp but will bend back when they hit things, which means you can really get in and get close to some of the items without worrying you're going to damage it. But it's got a lot more force than the uh, the wire that you usually get on strimmers. This really was quite good, but you can see you do hit things and ultimately then you do bend it. I guess this can be used for for if you let the grass overgrow too much and you uh, can't use a mower and you know it's a nice clear open space this will be fantastic but as you're every day that's going to be this from now on so glad i bought this you can hemorrhage your money pretty quickly in a place like this and a size like this so one of the ways i thought i will try and uh, lower down the expenditure uh, on flowers and plants and beautiful things like this um, is by uh, this new method of rooting specifically the rose bush um, well the rose tree whatever it is behind me um, i saw a guy rooting in a completely different way whenever i tried to make cuttings of the rose bush um, they would never survive so um, I'm trying a new way and see how that works so check out my method so one of the methods the guy was using was um, using a plastic cup a simple one he um, he melted a hole at the bottom and cut it all the way through so you've got an opening and basically what you do is you would then put it on a bush around like this, through, like this. See how that sits in there? You basically remove the outer skin layer and then we're gonna put the cup on over this. So I'll put one cup over it. See how it's just over that little um, exposed area? just under it and that's how you slide it through that's where you make a cutting in the cup right we're gonna put a second one so put the second one on you see I've uh, it's like reversed so first one's got a cut here and the second one inside has got a cut basically on the opposite side because we're gonna fill this with earth now and we don't want the earth to fall out that's why you do it like this it's trying to help us what happened to your nose Lightning! Look at me! Yes! Nose full of stuff. All done. Hope it works. But only time will tell. We'll check back soon. So here it is, all filled up. Um, a string tied around to keep it all together. So we'll see in a few weeks' time how that takes root. I hope it'll work. Fast forward to July, three months later on, and we're gonna check out if the roses have rooted. And I can tell you now, it's been a 50-50 success. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So three months later on, this is one of my rose bushes. Let's have a look. There is the cup. And you can see there's little roots there. 
Now, I've been very bad at watering it and just sort of relying on the rainwater, but it has taken. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna literally cut underneath here and the cup remains. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna open it up now and have a look at the roots and show them to you. I'll have to plant it straight away though. So here it is. And you can see its root system. It's really great. And you can just reuse these cups. And the best thing about this is it's already got some uh, rose flowers. So it's a ready bush. This, how great is that? Lightning, are you gonna help us plant these roses? He says he'll try. Here's another one that has also rooted down here, but the one behind it hasn't done so well because it's actually dropped all its leaves. So that's what I meant by 50-50 results. Still, it's great. So this method is great and well worth a try, absolutely. If you've ever tried to make rose cuttings and you were completely unsuccessful like me, then give this a go because that was easy. Just walk away and then come back and you've got a really tall bush tree that's well established and is flowering. So it's cleaning time at the chateau and that includes lightning and all his fluff that is coming off him. No, no, no. <laughs> he doesn't like it. It's a bit like snow day. Come on, lightning. Come this way, that's it, lie down. As a good puppy, down. Good boy, see? And we're gonna give him a nice big brush because he's shedding all his fur. He sheds it twice a year. And um, I will show you how much exactly comes off him. You can make a little baby husky out of him. But we'll also tell you the story of how we come to have lightning. So I'm using a brush like this and I like to do it outside because the hair just flies away and the birds take it and they nest with it or make nests with it um, sometimes. But yeah, Lightning loses 10 stones and he gets his bikini body ready for the summer. Lightning is a pure breed Siberian Husky crossed with an Alaskan Malumet. They call this in America an Alaski, and it's the breed that was used as the direwolves in Game of Thrones. Siberian Huskies are very wolf-like, but quite small. Alaskan Malumets are much bigger, so this breed is created so you get a very large wolf-like dog. How are we getting on? We're okay, we've got all the loose stuff off Lightning that was easy to get out. That's really, really coming off very, very easily. But now, not really getting much of him. So we're gonna change to a different amazing brush, which he hates because it really um, gets him naked very quickly. That's right. It's called Verminator. Yeah, and it's called that for a reason. It really does remove huskies. Or, uh, or sort of long-haired German Shepherd's hair really, really easily. And if you haven't come across it, oh my God, game changer. Shall we? So, Philly, tell them how we got Lightning. We didn't get Lightning as a puppy. We adopted him when he was 18 months old. The couple we adopted him from had decided to get a puppy to hold off having children for a little while. Unfortunately, what they didn't know when they picked up Lightning is actually they were already pregnant. He didn't have much training with them and quickly grew quite large and a little bit unruly. So he got a kennel in their back garden uh, and didn't live inside the house with them. It took a lot of training when we got him to get him to behave this well. And as you can see, 
He still doesn't behave completely, but he's strong-willed and that's a husky trait. Ooh, that's a nice scratchy, is it? Is it a nice scratchy? Of course, he lives in the house with us and there's no kennel for him anywhere. He has his entire park out the front where he's nice and safe and can't get out into any trouble. We like to think we've given him a great life now. And of course, he's part of the family. We wouldn't be without him. Just look at his cute little face. There's a lot of clearing up after him because the hair gets absolutely everywhere. There's one thing I can say about having a dog like this. Don't wear dark clothes. Looks like a washing machine has exploded and all the foam has come out onto the grass. He's ready for summer. This is our lovely Lightning who is well groomed now. Good boy, well done. He loves a bit of cat snacks. But look at him, he's much more thinner, neater, cleaner, and he's a happy doggy. And he's made a bit of a mess. Only a bit. This is why it's very important to wear non-stick clothes so the fluff does not stick to you. Eye protection, very important because once the hairs are in your eyeballs, it's very, very annoying. Sit, sit. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. Today, 25th of July, is a little bit bittersweet for us. We should have been having our first event of the year today and welcoming so many people into our, the grounds of the place. Sadly, not possible. Our future event, we are still up in the air about, but we're working towards it, as you can see, in the hope that it uh, is allowed to go on. We shall see, fingers crossed. Let's always look forward and be positive. If you have seen any tools that we have used in this video, as always, there is a link in the description below to our Amazon shop to make your life a little bit easier and hopefully find it. If you like our channel and enjoy what we make, please do like, share and subscribe along with hitting the bell button for notifications uh, when the latest releases are out. If you want to support our channel at all and continue helping us to make these videos, we do have Buy Me A Coffee. Feel free to look at that also in the description. And a massive thanks, apart from everyone for watching the videos, you guys out there, for our patrons for also helping to support this channel. It is a real help and the, the small bits that they've helped us get, we are working with to make the videos even better for you. So thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it and normal service has resumed. So we'll see you again on Wednesday. Stay safe.